Hey guys, Paul here. Um, so we all know what's going on. We've got the coronavirus uh, outbreak happening and it's really interfering with our lives and especially your guys' schooling. So we're gonna be doing online classes from now on. I'm gonna try to throw some uh, videos up, just you know, some little things that you guys can pick up. Not gonna be so much a lecture, but it's gonna be more about just things that I've done out in the field that may be able to help you guys out. So right now we're on chapter seven and we're covering tools. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I carry in my van um, and that's gonna really help you guys out. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff out there. I like to be ahead of the curve, make my job a little bit easier. You don't have to go out spend the money but it's cool to see exactly what's out there so let me go ahead and show you what we got all right guys so i've got my little setup right here it almost looks like a yard sale but it's really not so my first tool that we're going to cover is the oxyacetylene set uh, really cool little setup great for brazing i prefer this um, over the other torch reason being is um, it gets a lot hotter. Um, you have to be careful when you are brazing with the oxyacetylene kit, um, just because the torch does get so much hotter, it will start to melt the copper, unlike the um, the premixed gas. So you do have to be careful, but it is nice um, to get the job done. Um, it's a little bit on the heavy side, but so is the other tank. Um, you can replace one tank. Um, you don't have to get two. Uh, so once one empties, just replace the other one. You're good to go. So next what you have is the uh, Micron gauge here. Um, it's the JB Supernova. I like this guy. Um, you guys, some of you may, may already use this in class. Um, really nice setup, really accurate. Um, it, it's really served me well. So attached to it, we've got our JB5 CFM pump. I prefer JB pumps, vacuum pumps. Um, you guys may find something, I'm sorry, it's a 6 CFM. You may find that you like something else. Uh, you may find that you like a yellow jacket or a Navic or whatever else suits you. But for my personal preference, I prefer the JB. I do have the platinum, but it needs a little bit of repairs. Moving on over to our next little item here. This is just a little standard uh, fan blade puller slash bearing puller. Uh, really nice for those stuck on uh, shaft items. So that'll go ahead and that'll break that for you. Uh, moving on to this little beast here. We've got the Testo 310. And what this is, it's a combustion analyzer. So the way it works is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our probe, we're gonna drill a hole in the flue. We're gonna insert the probe into the flue and it's going to start to analyze the gases that are coming out of the combustion process. Those gases then are going to tell us what's going on with our system. Is our system running correctly? Is it not? Is there a potential crack in the flue? Is our flue plugged up? A lot of cool things that you can do with that. So it's a really nice tool to have. A lot of people don't use it, but it is becoming more and more popular. And then we do have a little printer here that attaches to it so you can print out your results, show them to the customer. Moving on over, um, I've got my little Hillmore bender here. Really cool setup. You know, we're gonna be bending copper. We wanna make nice sweeping transitions. We're trying to avoid elbows, um, any points that we're going to add as far as connections go. So. The less brazing that we do, the more uh, efficient, well, not necessarily more efficient, but the less likely we're going to have a leak in the system. So this is a nice little tool. It's a ratcheting bender. So you put your copper piping right across here. This little mechanism starts to ratchet forward. And as it starts to ratchet forward, it goes ahead and starts putting a bend in that copper real nice tool to have make those nice sweeping transitions or make that copper flow um, comes in different sizes i got the half inch set up right there um, we can go all the way up to seven eighths on this uh, current setup cool thing about this guy too and why i like it is you can do a reverse bend which means is it's 
the handle stays the same, but instead of the ratcheting going in this direction, we reverse it. So if we have a really tight area or against the wall, we need to make a bend, we put the reverse attachment on there and now all of a sudden we're bending. Moving in on to the next guy, we've got our little um, swaging slash uh, flaring tool. So all we do with this guy is we put our copper tubing right up through this little hole, or depending on whichever size we have. Um, there's a little stop that tells us exactly where we need to be with our uh, the depth of the piping. We spin our tool down until we make our flare or swage, and we're done. So nice little tool to have if you're going to be doing a lot of swaging, um, a lot of flare fittings you definitely need something along those lines. Uh, for me, if I am gonna be doing some swaging, I've got the hydraulic swager. So I use this guy mostly for flaring. Swage, this is the uh, uh, compact swaging tool, hydraulic, awesome setup. All you do is you just put this little nipple right there inside the pipe, press it a few times, it expands, creates a beautiful little swage for you. Perfect every single time much faster easier to do than trying to use that guy all right moving down the line here a little bit i've got my little yellow jacket digital torque wrench if you're going to be working on mini splits um, installing them servicing them that sort of thing it's very critical to torque the nut down on the flare nut to the manufacturer specifications if you don't you will leak um, I had a one that was sort of like the clicking type that a lot of mechanics use. It failed on me, almost caused a major disaster. So went ahead and went purchased this guy. Nice digital setup, awesome. Moving on down the line here. Next guy we've got our infrared thermometer. We're gonna have registers, we're gonna have vents, things that we can't get to. So this guy's perfect. We just shoot our little laser and it gets us a little readout of what our uh, temperature is. Cool thing is I can put a little probe at the top here, attach that to my line or um, attach the probe to whatever else I need to. It's gonna give me a reading as well. Really cool setup. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it's very close. So within a degree or two, that should get us in the ballpark for most things. ECM tester, just got this. Um, a lot of the new equipment coming out, or actually all the new equipment coming out is an ECM type of motor. Um, we're getting rid of the PSC. Um, reason being the government mandated a more energy efficient type of motor that's gonna be in your furnaces. So we need to be able to test it. There is no easy way to test it like we did beforehand with our multimeters on the old motors where we put our two leads on some uh, one on a ground one on the lead and that'll give us a voltage not quite as simple you would either have to jump out certain pins knowing which pins to jump out you know it can be something tricky if you're not doing it all the time or you can just get the ecm tester plug it in it'll tell you if the motor is good or not um, so basically we're saying a lot more electronics are involved in these motors that are really uh, coming around uh, moving on over, I've got my anometer, and what this guy does is it's going to measure the airflow coming out of the registers and the vents. So we want to make, you know, see what our CFM is, make sure that we've got adequate airflow coming out of there. Um, great little tool to have. Now we've got my digital multimeter. Um, I like the fluke brand i've used them for a long time this guy is going to measure your amperage all you do is open up the jaws put it around the wire and it'll tell you what your amp draw is if you don't want to measure amp draw you can also measure regular voltage our little leads pop in at the bottom and we can use it just like a standard multimeter it doesn't have the, all the functions that you would need for hvac with this model um, so I know UEI does have like an all invasive unit, um, but I do like the um, overall function and usability on this guy. And 
Um, unfortunately, I do have to carry two meters, but it's worth it for me. Uh, moving on down the line, we've got our combustible gas leak detector. So if we have a gas um, leak somewhere, I can use either soap bubbles or I can bust this guy out. And what he's going to do is he's going to signal once we start finding a gas leak. And that little buzzing, the beeping sound that you hear is going to start buzzing really fast once we find something that's leaking. Really nice um, just to start pinpointing leaks if, they, if you do smell something. Next, we've got the Rattler T40. Um, this is a carbon monoxide detector. It's a little personal unit that you wear on your person. Critical to have this. A lot of people uh, negate the fact that, hey, I'm going into a home. There may be a potential carbon monoxide leak and you're just gonna walk into the environment. Carbon monoxide is tasteless, it's odorless, and it will kill you. Um, so whenever I'm working on furnaces, anything combustible, I do put this guy on and wear it just to ensure my safety. Um, I had a home that I walked into, the flue pipe. It was a six inch flue pipe, and it had about a four inch hole in the side of it. So all that carbon monoxide was just leaking into the hole. Um, it, luckily, my the furnace wasn't running at the time, so my uh, meter wasn't going off. But had I, you know, had it on, I guarantee you would have been sensing that, and you know, would have saved my life if there was an issue down in the basement. All right, next little guy we've got is our digital manometer, and what this guy is going to do, it's going to read our pressures. Um, we're not talking about high pressures, we're talking about low pressures. So if we get in really tight there, we're talking about inches in the water column. All right, so what I'm going to be testing is I'm going to be testing my gas pressure. I'm gonna adjust my gas pressure, uh, feeding the system, make sure that it's within manufacturer specifications. I'm also gonna be testing static pressure. So in my ductwork, I'm going to see um, if I have any restrictions, airflow issues, that sort of thing, that's what this guy is going to point out for me. Right above it is just my little uh, inspection mirror. Uh, when I'm brazing, sometimes it's difficult to get to certain areas. So what you need to do is you need to be able to use this little mirror, look underneath the bottom, look around, see exactly what's going on. So that's what we have there. Next little setup we have is our uh, com our actual leak detector. This is a cool little dude right here. Um, use this a lot. It's going to detect refrigerant flow or refrigerant leaks, I should say. So if you have a little pinhole leak, uh, you're leaking from trader cores or anywhere else in the system, maybe difficult to see. Uh, where that leak is coming from. Sometimes if we have a leak, we'll have oil uh, coming out of that leak, which will, um, it'll sort of uh, oil up the side of the unit or wherever the leak is at. And so then we see that little sheen and we know that we have a leak. Otherwise, if we don't, it's a small leak, we may not have that oil. So this is where the leak detector comes into play. It's a little sniffer, sniffs up the gas into real small quantities, um, real accurate, works really well. Um, something that a lot of guys don't use, yet again, a lot of these tools start to add up in cost, so um, it's not something you could go, could go out and buy all at once, you know, unless you do have the funds, great. But uh, certain things you pick up over time and you learn what's gonna work out best for you. Um, right above it, we've got our core removal tool. The way this guy works is we're going to go ahead and we're going to screw this on where our hoses go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take this bad boy right here. We're going to start to unscrew this and what we're going to do, if I can do this simultaneously, we're going to pull out the valve core that's inside our uh, setup there. Once that valve core is pulled out. We're gonna go ahead, we're going to close off 
and it's a little bit difficult to do one-handed here. We're gonna close off the valve. Now our refrigerant can't escape. And we can unscrew it and our valve core would be stuck in here. And so our, we would have two pieces. I then put my new valve core in, stick it inside and uh, do the process in reverse. So that's how we would go ahead and we would replace a valve core if we needed to. We're, when we're pulling a vacuum, usually you wanna remove the valve cores to help with the drawing of the vacuum out of the system. Got my Milwaukee tools right here. Just a few basic guys right here. I love my little drill. Um, it works really well. Um, I prefer the fuel type. The fuel is a little bit more of a heavy duty uh, type of setup that you have. Um, I've left this guy up on a roof through a rainstorm and it's worked perfectly fine. So really heavy duty tools. Um, I would prefer that if you do get a setup and you get into the industry, buy something with a reputable brand name, Milwaukee, DeWalt, Makita, um, whatever else that you feel fit that's gonna work for your needs. Um, stay away from the cheap tools. They do have a tendency to not last as long, and especially um, with the work that we're doing, we want something that's gonna be pretty powerful and work for us. Things I like about the Milwaukee setup here, the tools have um, batteries that are interchangeable amongst them. I have an 18 volt and I have a 12 volt. I use 12 volt all day long, plenty of power for me. When I really need the oomph to do some things, I use the 18. Um, so this is my go-to guy, a little 12 volt screwdriver. Um, this guy I use 90% of the time. It will drive screws. It will do all kinds of things. Um, that the big boy does, but it's a fraction the size and the weight. Over here, we've got the tubing cutter. Um, really cool setup. You're gonna be doing a lot of tubing, cutting. Automatically does it for you. Super fast, efficient. Um, takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get that down, yeah, you're flying through cutting, you know, piping. Got a little sawzall here. Um, got the extended blade on here. I was cutting some uh, three inch piping, uh, PVC piping. So that's why we got the big guy on there, but plenty of power. Um, nice little setup to have. All right, and here is probably my favorite tool. This is the M12 Force Logic. Um, what this is, this is called a Pro Press. Um, instead of sweating pipe when we're doing plumbing connections, we have a little coupling. A little coupling, um, the jaws just go on the coupling. Once the pipe is inside the coupling, we press the button. The jaw starts to compress and they go ahead and make a solid connection. I use this for refrigeration as well. It's called uh, ZoomLock. That's br the brand name from Parker. Um, they have ZoomLock fittings and you use these fittings with refrigeration. I don't braze anymore as much as I uh, miss the torch. It's, I really don't. Um, you have issues when you are brazing. You can set things on fire, obviously. Um, sometimes if you're too close to a smoke detector, that'll go off. Uh, you don't have to nitrogen purge the lines anymore. All you do is clean up the pipe really well. Go ahead, put that on, crimp both sides of your fitting, and you're done. Um, real simple process. The fittings are a little on the pricier side, but it makes a world of difference. So that's what I've got here for the table. Let's uh, move on here to the van really quick. Um, so everybody's gonna have or need a good pair of gauges um, these are my backups just some JB gauges three uh, hose set up here um, gets the job done in case my primary gauges fail uh, these are my primary ones the s-man uh, 460 these are awesome I really love them digital cages are the way to go if you can afford them uh, really nice setup here um, so I've got my low side hose 
got my high side hose and then my um uh just a refrigerant line my hoses are backwards right now just because i had lost a depressor in one of them so i just switched the hoses since i don't use the refrigeration as much um so that's my thing but i'll fix it eventually but either way my display basically tells me all my information that i need so right now i have it set to r22 which is my refrigerant um, it'll tell me my low side my high side pressures at the same time just like my other set of gauges it's telling me my superheat so how do i know what my superheat is easy i got my little clamps take my clamp put it on my uh, suction side let it sit for a couple of minutes and it's going to read what the temperature is and it's going to tell me exactly what my superheat is i don't need a chart with this guy because it's going to tell me what my saturation temperature is right here underneath it it's even going to tell me what my uh, line temperature is here so we're obviously going to go ahead we're going to take the suction line temperature versus the saturation temperature and we're going to combine them and, or the difference and boom there's our superheat uh sub cooling opposite side here liquid saturation temperature versus the uh liquid line temp 19 degrees so technically i've got 19 degrees of sub cooling in the lines i am reading pressure right now in my hoses um because i do have refrigerant in there so more than likely it's r22 that's still been trapped inside so we'll just leave that in there for now um it's not causing any harm all right moving on to this guy we've got our uh, recovery pump i use the uh appion uh, really nice system removes all the refrigerant really well probably one of the better uh, recovery machines out there and finally I've got my Klein tool bag um, the nice thing about the Klein is it just holds all my little tools in here um, so just starting off with the back side uh we've got electric screwdrivers they're insulated so if i do touch anything um on them as far as me touching metal i'm not going to go ahead and i'm not going to electrocute myself because they are insulated and they're good till 600 volts um if i have another screwdriver in here i've got a little tiny flathead um used generally for uh control wiring that sort of thing a little larger flathead in here this is my go-to prying chipping whatever i need a flathead that's my uh little guy does the little the damage is needed uh, got a little channel locks a little sharpie missing the cap but pencil pencil is nice to have uh, we don't want to mark certain things so i uh, got a little eraser around there too got a small little adjustable wrench got some channel locks there lineman pliers uh, so some diagonal cutters uh, wire cutters whatever you want to call them we got some needle nose pliers wire strippers um, we've got a larger adjustable wrench right there smaller if i can get them out set of wire strippers you know we're going to be dealing with some small wires so uh, this is nice to have sometimes and your pack could be a little bit different i like the backpack because i can't overload it with a bunch of stuff and allows me to get up through um, hatches going up onto roofs if i have a side bag sometimes it's a little bit more difficult and you guys can customize your bag depending on what tools you need and what's going to work best for you. Um, just a bunch of different nut drivers. I've got the hollow shaft. You want hollow shaft. If you want magnetic, you can get magnetic, but definitely you need hollow shaft. Um, otherwise, you're going to bottom out before you can ever hit the nut. I've got a set of uh, just some tin, you know, snips, aviation snips in here. Pipe wrench, just a small little. Uh, pipe wrench in here this is a nice little tool you don't necessarily need this but 
I definitely like it. This is just a ratcheting crimper. So when we're going and uh, making our male uh, and female spaded connections, we can go ahead and ratchet our crimps nice and tight. This works really well. I've got like a little pack of just wire nuts, screws, uh, connectors all inside there. Things that, you, you know, instead of me running all the way to the van to get something, just got a small pack. Uh, razor blade. You're going to need some Allen wrenches um, from time to time, open up certain things. Getting into little tight spots, you can use a little 90 degree. Put this on your drill, get right in there. You want a small little level, you know, uh, leveling out electrical boxes, uh, thermometers, any of that sort of thing. Uh, got a little uh, uh, a lighter in here and a larger pipe wrench. And then if we open up the front pouch, got some thermometers. You want two reason being is you're going to have a temperature difference between the two so i'm going to measure the intake and the um the return and the supply temps uh, get the difference between the two it's easier just if you have two guys um i like these because they're bendable i'm going to put them into the supply or the return and then the little magnet's going to sit right there so it'll give me a direct reading attach it right to the duct and it's going to stay otherwise if i put it in this probe is going to sit inside the duct and it's just sort of going to hang so i like these ones that bend uh, got a pocket psychrometer we're doing ac work we're going to want to know what our wet bulb dry bulb is that's what this guy does um, so i've got these guys Malco makes these really nice because um, this is a quarter inch driver. So we have a lot of quarter inch screws that we're going to be dealing with, quarter inch heads. And then we have five sixteenths. So all you do, if I can, these are held on by magnets. I can't do this one handed, so hold on. So all you do is you remove it. And if you have any debris on the end, you can clean the debris, metal shavings, so um, that are inhibiting how your, uh, your, I should say, inhibiting your screws from getting all the way in. You can flip it, set it in place, and now all of a sudden, you know, I can do quarter inch or I can reverse it and do five sixteenths, all with the same um, tool. So they do come in a little bit longer length. They don't have these little, they have the stubby guys. They have, I think up to six or eight inches. So really nice. Um, we've got a little flame sensor, uh, just cleans it up nice and neat. We don't want to use sandpaper. Sandpaper actually will clog up the pores of the flame sensor, causing it to wear out prematurely. My little, little trick for you guys is these little husky ratcheting wrenches home depot sells them um, real nice because sometimes i have a tight little spot and i need to ratchet something in there this works out really well um, what else do i got in here that i can show you obviously nice little magnet guy um, the old switcheroo if i'm working on a system and I've got the door off while there's a door safety switch. That door safety switch needs to be depressed for the system to run. Um, I can bypass that or I can use this little magnet, plop it on the switch and it's gonna hold it in place so I can safely work on the system without having to hold it um, while I'm doing things. And of course, I've got my service wrench. Need a service wrench. There is this piece right here. So if I'm working on a system and I need to open or close 
the service valve. That's what I use. I use my service wrench. It's got the Allen heads right on attached to it. And obviously goes both ways. So, of course I forgot. We're gonna need a scale. So I've got these uh, field piece wireless scale. Uh, it's cool. Put my refrigerant up on top. It'll give me my readout digitally right here. And I'm set. So if I need to, I can hang my little display somewhere. So I'm not attached. I can go far away, take it with me, whatever range that is, and work on something else if I need to. So that's it with the tools. All right. So um, hopefully you uh, you guys like this little video. Um, showed you a few things that you may use, may not need. Um, oh, I do have one more thing to show you guys here really quick. Right there, that's a uh, bandsaw awesome tool if you're going to be doing electrical conduit things like that i've used that thing so many times it cuts through steel like butter um, just watch out for your fingers obviously but so those are the tools that i use i have in my van uh, hopefully that helps you guys out um, if you have any other questions you know go ahead email me uh, every wednesday i'm going to go ahead i'm going to post our new um, stuff for that week uh, whether it's an assignment, videos, things like that. So I'll do the best I can. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead, email me directly um, at our email address. And uh, all right, we'll see how this whole thing plays out. Till next week, guys.